good morning to all of you and I welcome you to this session of fluid mechanics. Today we will start a new section that is fluid statics. But before I start this section, I like to give you a closer that is the summary of the earlier section that we discussed that is the fundamental concept, uh, introduction and the fundamental concept. Well, uh, the closer is like this, what we have discussed there, first we identified a fluid as distinct from a solid from the viewpoint of mechanics is that a fluid goes on continuously deforming under the action of even an infinite small tangential force. Well, whereas a solid resists a tangential force under static equilibrium, fluid cannot do so. It resists tangential force only under dynamic equilibrium. Then we discuss the concept of continuum which gives a continuous description of matter within a substance without any empty space. So that any property can be defined as a continuous function of space and time. Then we recognize that in case of the flow of a fluid, a shear stress or a shear force is developed at each and every layer in the fluid flow or each and every point in the fluid flow through which the fluid offers resistance to flow and this property is known as viscosity by which the fluid offers a resistance to flow. And the shear stress is proportional to the rate of shear strain which in case of a simple flow, one dimensional fluid is the velocity gradient. For a class of fluid, this proportionality is linear, that means linearly proportional, the shear stress is proportional, linearly proportional to velocity gradient. Those fluids are known as Newtonian fluids because this law is known as Newton's law of viscosity. While a class of fluids which do not obey this linear relationship between the shear stress and the rate of shear strain or the velocity gradient are known as non-Newtonian fluids. Then we recognize a definition of property or property definition of a property compressibility of a fluid which is the measure of its change in volume or density with the application of pressure. So, a fluid is more compressible when it has got large change in volume or density with a small application of pressure or a small difference in pressure and it is characterized by the property known as bulk modulus of elasticity. For liquids, the bulk modulus of elasticity is very large so that it is almost incompressible. While for gas, it is other way, the fluids are compressible, its bulk modulus of elasticity is very low. Then we recognized the compressible and incompressible flow which is the measure of the change in density or volume of the flow due to a change in pressure brought about by the flow itself. That means it depends upon the flow velocity and the properties of the fluid so that the pressure difference which is caused is sufficient to cause a considerable change in density of the fluid. And it has been found that if the flow velocity is less than 0 0.33 times the aquatic speed or aquatic velocity in the fluid at that condition, then the change in density is less than 5 percent then we consider the flow to be incompressible. The ratio of these two velocities that is the flow velocity and the aquatic velocity in that medium at that condition is defined as Mach number. So, therefore, when the Mach number of flow is less than 0 0.33 then the flow is considered to be incompressible that means change in density is negligible. Then we recognized another property of the fluid as surface tension that it is because of the interplay of molecular cohesion and molecular adhesion, we have found that work is done in creating a free surface of the fluid. So, therefore, a free surface of the fluid always stores mechanical energy and the surface is always under a stretched condition. And the force acting on a free surface per unit length of an imaginary line drawn on the surface is defined as the surface tension. We have then recognized different phenomena like capillary rise, capillary depression as an interplay between the cohesion and addition. Cohesion is the force of attraction between the molecules of the same kind where addition is the force of attraction between the molecules of different kinds. It is because of this surface tension phenomena we have recognized that a curved interface creates a difference of pressure between the two sides of the interface. One side may be a gas or a miscible liquid, another side is the fluid or liquid itself to which we are pay paying our concentration. That means, there is a difference in pressure between a between 
two sides of a curved interface. The interface is defined by the demarcation of two immiscible fluids. So, in all, we discuss this thing in our section, fundamental cons introduction and fundamental concepts. So, today we will start fluid statics. Now, at the start, I will just tell you this fluid statics will discuss the force field which is generated in a fluid at rest, in a fluid at rest, in an expansion of fluid at rest, as a consequence of which we will see the definition of hydrostatic pressure. And then this section will include all the manifestations of hydrostatic pressures in a fluid at rest, the measurement of hydrostatic pressures, then the forces exerted on a body submerged on a fluid at rest, the concept of buoyancy and the stability of bodies submerged or floating in a fluid at rest. So, this will be in fact the contents of this section fluid statics which we will start today. Now, at the beginning let us consider that in case of a fluid at rest if we consider an expanse of fluid at rest, if we find out a fluid element which is an infinite small region of the fluid continuum, a fluid element in isolation from the entire fluid body and see it as a free body of the fluid element. You know what is a free body diagram. That means, we consider a fluid element in isolation from its entire surrounding of fluid and see that. Then we recognize two types of forces, two types of forces are acting on this fluid element in isolation in the free body. One force is body force. One kind of force is known as body force. What is that? This body force is an external force. Body force is an external force which is acting throughout the mass of this fluid element. Throughout the mass of this fluid element, it acts over throughout the mass. It may be constant over the entire mass, it may not be constant, but it is acting on the mass of the fluid element. And this body force is caused by an external agency. There is nothing to do with the fluid, it is an external force. For example, the gravity force is a body force, the force of gravitation. We know any substance or any matter on the surface of the earth is experienced by the gravitational force or gravitational attractive force of the earth and which is acting on the mass of the body. This is the typical body force, example of the typical body force. There may be other body forces if the fluid body is exposed in a magnetic field. So, magnetic force is acting on the fluid mass it is exposed in an electrostatic body force field. So, there may be a number of external agencies which may cause this type of body forces. So, therefore, one thing may be very clear to you that the detailed description of body force or body force field does not come from the concept of fluid mechanics. It comes from the concept of the physics which describes that body force. For example, what should be the variation of gravity force? What should be the value of the gravity force for a given mass is described by the law of gravitation. Similarly, if the body force is the magnetic force or electromagnetic force, it will be governed by the physics of that domain, that electromagnetism. So, therefore, gravity force is governed by the physics of that particular uh, domain which defines the force. Now, another force which acts on the fluid body in isolation is the surface force. What is the surface force? This comes from the picture that when you make the isolation of the fluid body from its entire surrounding, that means from a continuous expanse of fluid, we take a fluid body in isolation as a free body, then the actions of its neighboring molecules or neighboring particles which are in contact with it when it was in the continuous mass of the fluid gives rise to a force which appears only on the surface and is known as surface force. You know from your elementary mechanics that this surface force which appear on the surface of a free body can be resolved into two components. One is perpendicular to the surface, perpendicular to the surface, another is along the surface. The force perpendicular to the surface is known as normal force and the force along the surface, the component along the surface is known as shear force and the respective ratios with the area of the surface over which these forces act known as normal stress and the tangential or shear stress. So, therefore, we see there are two kinds of forces act, one is the body force, another is the surface force and this surface force in fact in an expansion of fluid constitute the internal forces that do not appear as an external forces, only the body force appears as an external forces. Now, first let us recognize what is the state of forces or stresses generated in a fluid at rest with this 
as the introduction. Let us now see here state of force in a fluid at rest, okay? in a fluid at rest, in a fluid at rest, in a fluid at rest. Now, let us consider a fluid is at rest, an expanse of fluid is at rest. What should be the state of force? First, let us consider a fluid element, a tetrahedronal fluid element we consider in general, a tetrahedronal fluid element like this. tetrahedronal fluid element which coincides with the coordinate plane. Let us fix the coordinate axis, a Cartesian coordinate axis x, y, z like this in its proper sense of rotation x, y, z and let us consider a tetrahedronal fluid element. Let this is z axis A, B, let this is C. A tetrahedral fluid element A, O, B, C, A, which have distinct faces like A, O, B, A, O, C, B, O, C, and another inclined face is A, B, C, this face. These three faces are coinciding with the coordinate planes. The face B, O, C coincides with the X, Y plane, let X, Y. Similarly, the plane AOC coincides with the YZ plane and the plane AOB coincides with the XY plane, XZ plane, sorry, XZ plane. If we take a very simple case of a tetrahedral fluid element whose planes are coinciding with the coordinate planes and now we try to find out the forces acting on this. Now, first one thing you have to recognize then when the fluid is at rest there cannot be any tangential stress or tangential force on the fluid. It is 0. So, there cannot be any tangential force because fluid at rest can develop no tangential force. Similarly, a fluid at rest cannot develop any tensile force. So, only force in a fluid at rest is the compressive force. So, therefore, if we see the free body of this tetrahedral element, then we see only the compressive forces are acting in this direction. For example, in this normal compressive force in this plane, the normal compressive force is acting. If I denote the compressive stress as sigma x, this times, now if I just, this is dy, write this dimension as dy, these dimensions as dx and these dimensions as dz. That means, I define the tetrahedral element with the dimensions dx, dy and the height dz. Then this is a small infinite small tetrahedral element. It is uh, actually this figure is made in an exaggerated way. So, this is dx and this is dz. So, the net force in the x direction on this tetrahedral element will be what? Will be the x, this is the x direction force on this due to the surface force sigma x f x is equal to d x into d y by 2. This is a triangular surface. So, this will be sigma x into d x d y by 2, d x d z by 2 very good d x d x and d z by 2 into this will be sigma y very good. So, this will be then f y. So, this will be then f y sorry then this is the y direction. So, I am writing this first as f y. Okay, let me write first f y. Then where from we will get another force. Now, you see the surface forces on this surface A O C, B O C will not be contributed in the direction of y. So, therefore, only surface force let us define a surface force in this inclined plane A B C and let this stress is sigma n sigma n is the stress that is in the normal direction to this surface a b c and let us define that this normal to this a b c to this plane a b c makes an angle of alpha rather you write beta gamma with the x y and z axis. 
so that cos alpha, cos beta and cos gamma are the direction cosines, are the direction cosines of this normal to the plane AO, ABC. That means, this inclined plane ABC has a normal which makes angle alpha with the x direction, angle beta with the y direction and angle gamma with the z direction. Now, therefore, the forces acting perpendicular to this ABC plane that is the surface force, it will be what sigma n into the area of this plane ABC and its component in the y direction will be into cos beta. So, therefore, it will be minus sigma n. Let us consider d a is the area of this inclined plane a b c into d a into cos beta all right sigma n d a cos beta. Now, here we assume another thing that gravity is the only body force field that gravity is the only body force field and this axis z is along the vertical direction. So, therefore, there is no other external force acting on this fluid element in the direction of y. So, this is the only force acting in the y direction net force. Similarly, if I write the x direction force f x, f x is acting in which way that this is the x direction that means, it is acting on the plane A O C in the direction of x that means, this force. So, this force will be due to the sigma x times the area of this plane which will be delta y dy into dz. So, sigma x into dy dz by 2 and similarly, the component which will come the component in the x direction because of the force normal force on the plane a b c will be this multiplied with cos alpha that is the direction cosines alpha is the angle with the x axis of the normal to this inclined plane a b c. Similarly, if I write f z, f z also it will be contributed first by the surface force. If sigma z I define the stress in the z direction, so it will be acting on this surface of area d y d x by 2 that means, sigma z d x d y by 2 minus similarly the contribution that is the vertical component of the force surface force in this a b c plane. Another force will act which is the weight of the tetrahedron that means, the external body force is the gravity force that is the weight total weight the gravity force is the weight of this tetrahedron that will be equal to rho times the volume mass. What will be the volume? Volume of this tetrahedron from the simple geometry probably you know I can write by 6 times the g because this is rho into v is the m and g. So, this will be the net force in the z direction. This will be the net force in the x direction. This will be the net force in the y direction. Now, what happens is that this tetrahedronal fluid element we consider for a con for convenience such shape. So, any fluid element in this static expanse of fluid is under equilibrium against these forces. That means, we take a free body of the fluid element and analyze the forces, we will see that these are in equilibrium with all these forces. That means, the each and every component is equal to 0 for the static equilibrium of the fluid element. Now, if we make this 0 and at the same time, if we see that this has to be kept, if we see that this d a cos alpha for example, here d a cos alpha where cos alpha is the direction cosines that means, cosines of the angle made by the normal with the x direction. So, this will be nothing but the what will be this? This will be clearly the projection on the plane which is perpendicular to the x direction that means, projection of the area on y z plane that means, this will be simply d y d z by 2. That means, this will simply be equal to this area d y d z by 2. Similarly, if we see d a cos beta, d a cos beta will be what? d a cos beta where beta is the angle 
of the normal with the y direction that means d a cos beta will the projectional area on the x z plane that means which is perpendicular to the y direction that means this area d x d z by 2 that means d a cos beta will equalize this d x d z by 2. In the similar way this d a cos gamma will be equal to d x d y by 2 that means this is the projectional area in the x y plane that is the plane which is perpendicular to z direction. So, if you put that and then you see from this first equation we get sigma y is equal to sigma n, second equation we get sigma x is equal to sigma n and third equation we have to see one more thing that since dx dy dz that is this dz dx dy are so small that this is a relatively higher order term as compared to these two. So, therefore, we can neglect this term that means we can neglect the weight of the infinite small element. So, if the infinite small element tends to be 0 that means if we contract this element to a small one. So, the weight can be neglected because it is relatively at higher order as compared to other terms. So, here from also we get sigma z is equal to sigma n. So, out of this we get simply the thing sigma x is equal to that means which states that the stresses at any point because when we consider this tetrahedral fluid element or a fluid element is going to be infinite small that means it comes almost to a point then the stresses from all directions x y z they are equal in magnitude. So, therefore, we come to this conclusion that the stresses in a static fluid at any point directed towards that point from all directions and they are of equal magnitude and they are of equal magnitude. It may be from any directions and they are of equal you have read it at your school level and they are of equal magnitude and this magnitude is defined as a scalar quantity P which is known as hydrostatic pressure, hydrostatic. Actually, it should be fluid static, but conventionally it is known as hydrostatic. The word hydro is used, hydrostatic pressure or thermodynamic pressure. When you will read thermodynamics, you will see that this is also known as thermodynamic pressure. Here, specifically we will use hydrostatic pressure. So, we define therefore, this sigma x is equal to sigma y is equal to sigma z with a scalar quantity p with a negative sign. Specifically, this is because to keep compatibility with the convention that tensile stresses are positive. So, therefore, the stresses are compressive which is found or which is exhibited by this equation because with a minus sign and this is are of equal magnitude whose magnitude is given by the quantity p. So, p represents the scalar quantity which defines the magnitude of the compressive stress at any point in the fluid element, okay, which is same in all directions. This is known as Pascal's, Pascal's law. Who first described this law? Pascal's law. This defines the state of stress in a fluid at rest. Now, after this I will describe the basic equations of fluid statics, you write basic equations, basic equation of basic equation of fluid statics, basic equation of fluid statics. Okay. Now, we have recognized that in a fluid at rest the state of force or state of stress generated is such that at each and every point the st compressive stresses fluid at any point the stresses is directed towards the point from all directions that any point is under a compressive stress which is equal in all direction that means the stresses are directed towards the point from all directions and have got the equal magnitude which is known as the hydrostatic pressure. So, therefore, we recognize a pressure field is generated in a fluid at rest, but now we must know in a fluid at rest how this pressure field or the pressure varies with the space coordinates in the fluid. That means, if we set a frame of reference axis, then how this pressure field 
behaves with the change in the coordinate axis. That means, we want to seek a functional relationship between this pressure with the space coordinates x, y, z. That means, to develop the analytical expression of the pressure field in a fluid at rest. This is what now you will do, which is known as basic equation of fluid statics. Now, let us consider in a expanse of fluid, a fluid mass like this, a general fluid mass in as a free body. Consider this fluid mass is bounded by a surface S and the surface area is A and the total volume of this fluid mass or fluid element is V. Now, let us consider a small elemental volume at a point d v, where the density of the fluid is rho. Density is a point property, you know. Now, let us first consider there is a body force field in the fluid mass, a general body force field. Let us consider a general body force field, which is so described that at this point, let the body force vector acts like this, which is given by x bar as the body force vector per unit mass. This x bar is the body force vector, you write body force vector per unit mass at that point, at any point, body force vector V C T O R body force vector per unit mass, we define per unit mass. Let us have a reference coordinate axis like this x y and z. Now, you see that this fluid element we know is under equilibrium against two forces. One is the body force, another is the surface force. Surface force has the pressure forces, which is acting on its surface. Now, I find out what is the total body force A B, total body force vector A V, where x bar is the body force vector per unit mass at a particular point, where the point encompasses elemental volume dv and density is rho. So, from simple mathematics we can tell, so the body force for this elemental volume will be rho x bar into dv, because rho dv is the mass and body force per unit mass. So, if you integrate this thing over the entire volume of this body, so we will get the total body force vector a b which will be the volume integral of this f x bar d v over the entire volume. Now, we want to know what is the total surface force vector of this <coughs> fluid element. How to know it? To know it mathematically or to give a mathematical expression for this, we will have to consider this way. Let us consider a elemental surface area and small elemental surface area on the surface of this fluid element defined by d a. And we define a vector, unit vector n bar, that is the not bar, this is the vector, we tell that n, that is unit vector n, which is positive in a direction outward from the surface, outward from the surface. So, that we can define the body force vector in this way, which is acting on this elemental surface, if P is the pressure, which we have already recognized, that is the pressure acting on this surface d a, we can express this as, for this elemental area, this will be n unit vector P d a. So, P d a is the actual force acting on this area in this direction, towards the area, because this is a compressive force. So, it is normal to the area d a pressure into d a is the total force and this is n is the unit vector which is positive in the outward direction. So, this is the direction of the force acting on this elemental area d a. So, if we make the integral over the entire area for this fluid element, we will get the vector of the surface for total surface force vector over the entire body. Now, under equilibrium, for the equilibrium of the body or the body under equilibrium, we can write a b a plus f s is equal to 0. So, therefore, what we can write? We can write this rho x bar d v plus p d a is equal to 0. I think there is no difficulty. 
So, these two things, this is over area A V. So, this sum of this t, A B plus F S is equal to 0. Now, we know from, S, from our elementary mathematical knowledge by the use of Gauss divergence theorem, you know that Gauss divergence, if you use Gauss divergence theorem, we can change this surface integral to a volume integral. How? Now, let me write this first, the first term. Please ask any question x bar dv. Now, how to change this surface integral to a volume integral? This is a scalar quantity operated with a unit vector. So, this is a vector quantity. So, it is just change in terms of the gradient, gradient of the scalar quantity, grad p, which is a vector dv. So, we know that we can change this surface integral to a volume integral in this manner. That means, equality of this by this comes from the cause divergence theorem and that becomes equal to 0. So, therefore, we can write that the entire thing like this grad p plus sorry a minus sign is there. I am sorry a minus sign is missing. So, grad p minus rho x into d v is equal to 0. All right? Okay? Okay? I think there is no problem. Now, again, we see that this is valid. This expression is valid irrespective of the value of d v or d v. That means, it is valid for any small elemental control volume or any volume of the fluid element. So, therefore, we can write in general this part is 0. That means, in fact, it is independent of d v or v. So, this integration may be done for any volume v of the fluid element. We can take this is arbitrary. So, therefore, this part is 0. So, therefore, we see this is the most important equation and this is the equation of fundamental equation of fluid statics. So, the fundamental equation of fluid statics which describes the variation of pressure with the space coordinates or which gives the variation of or gives the pressure as a function of the space coordinates are like this. This is the expression in the most compact and vector form grad p is equal to rho into x bar where p is the pressure and x bar is the body force vector. Now, let us consider a simple case, how to resolve it with respect to a frame of reference. Now, I am interested to know a description of the pressure field in terms of x, y, z coordinates. That means, I sorry, I think this will be x in proper sense of rotation x, y and z. That means, I am interested to know the variation of p in terms of x, y and z, a simple rectangular Cartesian coordinate system in case of fluid at rest. This is the fluid at rest. So, then what I will do? From this general vector form of the equation, I will write what is grad p? Grad p, I can write i, where i, j, k as you know are the general nomenclature for the unit vector in x, y, z coordinate i del p del x plus j del p del y, well plus k del p del z. And if I write x bar, uh, sorry x vector, x vector x that the body force per unit mass at x x plus x y i sorry, plus j, not this one, j x y plus k x z, where x x is the component of the body force per unit mass in the x direction, it is the component of body force per unit mass in the y direction, it is the component of body force per unit mass in the x z direction. And if I write this, we get that del p del x equalizes x x, del p del y equalizes x y. I am sorry, I am sorry, rho is there, very good. Rho, rho is there, very good, rho x x, rho x y and del p del z is, yes, rho x z. Please, please, 
what is the problem please you tell me rho is there rho xx rho xy rho xz please any problem any difficulty please ask me what happened okay it is very simple there is nothing complicated rho xx rho x that means this is precisely the expression in terms of a Cartesian coordinate system. Now, if we consider gravity is the only body force field, if we consider now gravity is the only body force field, what will be the value of xx? If we consider z axis is in the vertical direction, what is xx? 0, very good. What is xy? And what is xz? If we consider z positive in the upward direction, minus d. So, minus rho. So, if we consider only gravity is the only body force field, that means there is no such external body force or external force acting on the fluid body, gravity will always be there. Then we finally arrive this equation that del p del x is 0, del p del y is 0, which means that p is neither a function of x nor a function of y. That means in a horizontal plane, pressure is same everywhere. It is not a function of x and y. Well, that a horizontal plane pressure is same everywhere. It is only a function of z. That means p is only a function of z. So, therefore, we can write del p del z as dp dz. We can write in terms of the total differential or ordinary differential is minus rho g. So, therefore, we come to a conclusion in a simple case that where there is no external force acting as the body force, gravity will always be there p is a function of only z which is clear from this mathematical symbol that dp dz means p is a function of z so that the ordinary differential form we write is equal to minus rho g. That means p varies only in z direction. That means if we consider a frame of reference like this x, y and z. So, p is neither a function of x nor a function of y. It is a function of z only. Now, therefore, we see the basic equation of fluid statics comes in this form, which is a differential form. But if we want to find out an explicit relationship of P with Z, what we have to do? We have to integrate this equation. But integration of this equation will cannot, cannot be done until and unless we know the nature of variation of rho. That means, we cannot integrate it until and unless we know the nature of variation of rho with either Z or P. Let us consider first a solution for incompressible fluid, 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 when rho is constant. That means, when rho is constant, that means in case of a liquid, rho is constant. So, simply integrate it, you get P is equal to what you will get? Minus rho g z plus a constant c. This is simply the equation. So, c has to be found out from a suitable boundary condition, from a suitable boundary condition. Let us define a liquid with a free surface. Let us consider a static mass of liquid with a free surface. Let us consider this x, y, z coordinate axis. Let us consider this datum plane where from the z is being measured. So, we can tell that pressure at any point whose vertical coordinate is measured as z from a reference x plane, x coordinate axis, y coordinate axis, let a x y z like that, it is minus rho g z plus c. If we define a free surface, if we define a free surface, so that whose vertical coordinate is z 0, we can find out and the pressure is P 0 at the free surface where P 0 is the ambient pressure, then we can find out that P 0 minus rho g z 0 plus c. So, c we can find out as P 0 plus rho g z 0. So, we can put this value of c and we can show it is, is equal to rho g z 0 minus z, z 0 minus z. That means, at any point so, z 0 minus z, if I define as h, I get p is equal to p, p minus p 0 is rho g h. That means, it is rho g times the depression 
of this point from the free surface or depth of this point from the free surface. So, this gives a very simple equation that in a fluid uh, in a liquid or incompressible fluid at rest the pressure at any point if there is a free surface where the pressure is the ambient pressure P0 then at any point which is at a depth h from the free surface the pressure exceeds from that of the ambient by this quantity rho g h. This is a consequence of the solution of the basic equation of fluid statics in differential form for an incompressible case where rho is constant. Okay? So, thank you. Next class we will discuss the other cases. Okay. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Uh, I welcome you to this session of fluid mechanics. We will be continuing our discussion on fluid statics. So, last class if you recall we were discussing the basic equations or fundamental equations of fluid statics and we finally recognize that in an expanse of fluid at rest the pressure varies only in the vertical direction. The pressure does not vary in the horizontal plane, in a horizontal plane. That means, if we recognize a Cartesian frame of reference with vertical axis as one of the coordinate axis, then we see that the pressure ceases to be a function of other coordinate axis or space coordinates in a horizontal plane. Pressure simply varies in the vertical direction and it decreases with an increase in the z or the vertical coordinate that means upward, in upward direction the pressure decreases. This is because the slope of this pressure with this upward direction coordinates gives a negative value. And if we now recall this mathematically, then we see that if we recognize this x, y and z coordinate, we have seen that the basic equation is like that dp dz that means p is a function of z only and its slope is given by minus rho into g provided the body force is the only gravitational force. That means, in this expanse of fluid at rest no other external force is acting. That means, only external force acting or the body force acting is the gravity force and then the pressure varies only in the z direction by this equation. And also we recognize that in case of an incompressible liquid the solution for this is P is equal to that means, when rho is constant minus rho g j plus a constant. And we recognize that if we have an expanse of fluid at rest with a free surface, if this be a free surface where the pressure impressed is the ambient pressure P 0, then we can find this value of C and if we define the z coordinate of the free surface as z 0 from any frame of reference. And at any point where we are finding out the pressure p, the z coordinate is z, then this equation can be written that p minus p 0 is simply rho g into z 0 minus z. All right? All right? z 0 minus z is simply the vertical depression of this point from the free surface. If we define it as h, it is simply rho g h. So, therefore, we see that if we express the p minus p 0, the difference in pressure from that of the ambient pressure exerted on the free surface of an expanse of fluid, it is a linear variation p minus p 0. It starts from 0 and linearly varies with the depth, linearly varies with the depth. And this formula was first found by the scientist Torricelli and that is why it is known as Torricelli's theorem. Now, we will find out the similar explicit relationship of P with Z for compressible fluids. This is simple mathematics, not much fluid mechanics is involved. Now, we first consider an isothermal fluid. Compressible fluid means whose density changes a isothermal fluid. That means, a fluid at rest 
a fluid at rest where the density changes, but temperature remains constant. Now, you know for any system the equation defining the pressure, density and temperature is known as the equation of state. Equation of state defines a functional relationship between pressure, density and temperature. So, if we consider the compressible system uh, or the gas as a perfect gas, this functional relationship between pressure, density and temperature equation of state is given by P is equal to probably you know these things from your physics, knowledge in physics or thermodynamics where R is the characteristic gas constant. So, for an isothermal fluid T is constant. So, therefore, the relationship between pressure and density is that P by rho is constant. So, now it becomes simply school level mathematics. We can write the pressure P let us write P like this P by rho in terms of a reference pressure P 0 by rho 0, where P 0 and rho 0 is a reference state. That means, at some location if pressure is P 0 and density is rho 0, which we take as reference state, then P by rho these are the variables is P 0 by rho 0. Now, the simple task is to solve this simple mathematics d P d j is very simple minus rho g by substituting the value of rho. If you substitute the value of rho from this equation, here you get d p by p <coughs> rho is p rho 0 by p 0 is minus what rho 0 by p 0 rho 0 by p 0 g d z. All right. Now, if we integrate this, we get ln p is equal to you get integrate very simple rho 0 by p 0, these are the constant defined by the reference state plus some constant. Okay. This constant we can found, we can find if we define that the z coordinate at this reference state of p 0 and rho 0, where pressure is p 0 and rho 0, we define the z coordinate for the reference states, the z coordinates from any reference coordinate axis is z 0 then we can find out the value of C as ln P 0 plus rho 0 by P 0 g z 0 that we can find out the value of C. And this value of C if we substitute here simple school level thing we get ln P by P 0 is minus rho 0 by P 0 into g z minus z 0. This is the simple expression or you can write in terms of the exponential function ln means that it is the exponential function that is the exponential function of minus p 0 by rho 0 sorry by p 0 g times z minus z 0. So, we get. So, there is nothing fluid mechanics it is only a mathematical exercise through which we can find out the variation of pressure with the vertical height a z that vertical height z in case of a compressible fluid where density changes <coughs> along with the change in the pressure or other way you can tell the pressure changes because of the change in density in a fashion that the temperature remains constant and we consider the system of compressible gas or a compressible system behaves as a perfect gas where the equation of state that means the relationship between pressure, density and temperature has this form P is equal to rho RT, so that we can use that. And therefore, the nomenclature P 0, rho 0 and z 0 are the reference states. That means, at some location z 0, we know the value of pressure as P 0 and density as rho 0. So, this is the expression. In the similar way, we can find out the expression where the temperature changes, where the temperature changes rather we can write non isothermal, non isothermal case non isothermal case. Now, this is very important where the temperature changes, but in this regard I like to tell you one thing that in our atmosphere the temperature up to a certain height changes linearly with the altitude. And if we express the temperature in that level of atmosphere from the earth surface where temperature changes linearly with the altitude, we can write this way. This is the temperature at the sea level and z is the altitude from the sea level. 
in our usual atmosphere the value of T 0 at the sea level is approximately 288 Kelvin and the value of alpha this is known as this is the terminology lapse rate that up to the altitude which this linear decrease in temperature takes place the lapse rate that is constant in this equation that is equal to 6.5 Kelvin per kilometer. So, this way if we define the temperature change that is a temperature decreases with the altitude then the rest part that means to find out the explicit relationship of pressure with the altitude becomes a simple mathematics that means minus rho g. Now, rho is what from the equation of state along with that if we assume that the atmosphere varies uh, sorry behaves as a perfect gas where rho can be expressed as P by R T and in place of T if I write T 0 minus alpha j that is times the g. That means, what I have done rho is P by R T and T is varying with j T 0 is a constant which is the value when z is equal to 0, where z is measured from the earth surface at sea level and this is the temperature at any altitude z. So, T 0 is usually 288 Kelvin is a typical value and alpha is this one. So, T 0 alpha are the constant parameter. Now, next rest part is simple mathematics that you go on integrating this. If you integrate this taking p here d p by p, then you get ln p is my is equal to minus g by r sorry i think we mu i must write another line otherwise it will be difficult for you dp by p is equal to minus g by r t0 minus alpha j tz so if you integrate it then here it will be ln p and if you integrate it it will be ln t ln T 0 minus alpha z with respect to dz and alpha minus alpha. So, minus minus plus and alpha will come this coefficient in the denominator the usual rule of integration and simply T 0 minus alpha z as the whole argument ln. So, this will induce a constant c and this constant you can very well determine as you say that T 0 is the temperature when z is equal to 0. That means, I can write c is equal to ln P 0 if we consider the P 0 is the atmospheric pressure at sea level corresponding to T 0 and Z is equal to 0, then I can simply write C is equal to minus G by R alpha ln T 0. So, if I substitute this value of C here, then I get a simple expression ln P by P 0 is what ln G by R alpha ln T 0 minus alpha z minus ln t 0 I take inside ln this minus ln this is ln this by this that means t 0 alpha minus alpha z by t 0. This ln things I can remove and I can keep it in terms of I write it alpha z by t 0 terms within the bracket raised to the power r alpha. That means, this gives a power law type of variation. So, this is nothing but a simple mathematics. Well, any difficulty? All right. 